Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Tuesday, June 3rd, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, top experts agree Obama violated law in Bergdahl's negotiation. Then, will Holder's Terror Task Force investigate Operation Fast and Furious? And an intrepid teenage journalist leaves Pelosi at a loss for words. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. It's all about we're all off balance, we have no free speech, but government can do whatever it wants. Well, before I get into the latest regarding the release of Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl, I just wanted to let you guys know that we are not falling for the divide and conquer tactic that is Bergdahl Gate. We will not forget, we will continue reporting on the scandal plaguing the White House prior to this scandal. Of course, I'm talking about the sorry state of affairs there at Veterans Affairs. It seems as if they were, you know, the Obama administration was kind of sitting there going, Hmm, the entire country is now rallying behind the veterans. Even the mainstream media is demanding that we do something about the poor quality of health care that these veterans are receiving. We had just done a really stellar job at convincing everyone that veterans were domestic terrorists. And now they're demanding that we do something about it. What can we do? And then boom, Bergdahlgate. And so not only now are the veterans fighting amongst themselves rather than fighting the real enemy, the mainstream media is now talking about this storyline. The Veterans Affairs scandal has been pushed out of the headlines. And Obama thinks that he can now say, hey, look, veterans, I care about you. No soldier left behind. You know, we were here fighting for you. And of course, that has now blown up in his face and is just another scandal to add to the scandals plaguing the Obama White House. Now, on to the Bo Bergdahl saga. There are so many questions with this story. One of those main questions is, did Obama trade five top Taliban commanders for an army deserter? Now, there is evidence to support that Bergdahl left on his own. Sergeant uh, Bo Bergdahl apparently left a note for his comrades in which he said, I did not want to fight for America anymore. I didn't believe in the war. And he said he was leaving to start a new life. Now, a soldier who spoke to Mail Online, who was uh, stationed in the same platoon as Bergdahl, made his feelings and those of his comrades very clear. He said, as far as I'm concerned, Bergdahl deserted his men and should face a court martial. People died trying to save him. He was a deserter. Now, in fact, Bergdahl was never officially listed as a POW. And then, of course, we have this flashback from 2010. There were reports that Bergdahl actually converted to Islam and was teaching the Taliban how to build bombs. Now, this article from 2010 reports Bo Bergdahl, there he is, they, they knew where he was at, and they said that this army soldier had converted to Islam and was teaching the Taliban ambush skills and how to make bombs using old cell phones. A Taliban deputy district commander in Paktika told a newspaper that most of the skills he taught us we already knew, but some of my comrades think he's pretending to be a Muslim to save himself so they wouldn't behead him. And, of course, that's very true. As uh, Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs pointed out, it's very odd he wasn't beheaded in those five years because that's what those guys do. But some, some outlets are reporting that even prior to this, Bergdahl had wanted to renounce his U.S. citizenship. But here's the disputed fact. Was he a deserter? Was he a prisoner? And they're saying now an Army secretary confirmed that they're going to be doing a full investigation into his 2009 disappearance. But that is insane. It makes it obvious that this is a distraction tactic because they knew where he was the entire time. And of course, all this new evidence that's surfacing is sure to pile even further pressure on Obama and, and the, the issues surrounding his error in judgment over releasing these five top Taliban commanders over what could possibly be a deserter who abandoned his unit and his oath that he took for the U.S. Army. So, of course, that's one of the big issues, as well as the fact that Obama did all of this without giving Congress 30 days notification. Um, obvious breach of the law there. Now, why did Obama do it? He said he did it because Bergdahl's life was in danger. But wasn't his life in danger the entire time over the last five years? 
what happened all of a sudden? What was the sudden change? Because the Pentagon knew where he was. The Pentagon had followed him that entire time. Uh, the special forces found Bergdahl and his captors on multiple occasions, even down to knowing exactly how many gunmen were surrounding Bergdahl. But they decided they wouldn't risk rescuing him. They didn't want to risk any more men for a deserter. So this is someone that they had been considering a, to be a deserter. Now, the AP also reports that the U.S. government kept tabs on Bergdahl's whereabouts with spies, drones, and satellites, even as they were pursuing these negotiations to get him back over the five years that he was being held in captivity. Now, of course, the decision was made, however, not to rescue him because they considered him a deserter and they didn't think that it was, that he was worth risking any more lives. There's a lot of speculation going around about the Bo Bergdahl story. What the government says is that there was a combat patrol, Bo fell behind and the Taliban captured him. What the guys in his unit are saying is that he planned to leave, he left a note behind saying that he was fed up with the army and what was going on in Afghanistan and he was going on to start a new life. Now whether or not you believe Bo Bergdahl is a hero or a deserter, it doesn't matter. What we do know is that men lost their lives looking for him. How would you feel waking up, doing roll call, and finding out that one of your brothers is missing? You would do anything you could. You would search day and night looking for him, just like those men did. And men died. And now five years later, they, come to, they, they find out that not only did he desert them, but their brothers died for nothing. Just think about that. Yesterday I was scrolling through Facebook and I was invited to a uh, page. And apparently it was started by a lot of the members from his old unit and it was called Bo Bergdahl is not a hero. And it was very interesting, I was scrolling through and I saw an image that a wife had put up and it was of her husband beside the wheelchair with his daughter and he is permanently injured. He got her looking for Bo. There's a lot of people that are very upset about him leaving, so I just want people to understand their side of the story as well. I know it's easy to get caught up in emotion and think, you know, he's back, we should just leave him alone. That's understandable. But just stop for a minute, put emotion aside, and look at the facts. Soldiers from Bo's old unit were told not to speak about the events of Bo Bergdahl's capture. Now that's just very odd, you know, to, to, not, to be told by the government you can't talk about this, and why is that? They were also forced to sign non-disclosures. Now soldiers from Bo's old unit are starting to speak out. A lot of them said they're glad that he's back. That's understandable. He's been away from his family for five years. He deserves to be back home. But once he's better, what they want is justice. And it's not hard to, to believe that that's how those guys would feel. You know, people died. Of course, he should stand trial. He should be account held accountable for his actions. That's not wrong to think. So stop being emotional. Stop being hateful to people who do want justice for the lives that were lost. And even further evidence that this is just a distraction tactic and for whatever reason they're whipping the media into a frenzy of trying to decide was he a deserter or is he a hero, is he a traitor, they knew the entire time this is how they see him. And in fact, a senior official confirmed to Fox News that intelligence agencies were investigating Sergeant Bergdahl prior to his capture by the Taliban. They confirmed that the conduct of Bergdahl, both in his final stretch of active duty in Afghanistan and during his time when he was living amongst the Taliban, was thoroughly being investigated by the U.S. intelligence community and is the subject of a major classified file. Indeed, that's exactly what we've been saying, was probably the major classified file that Hastings was working on that got him killed. Now, of course, in conveying as much, the Defense Department source confirmed that Many within the intelligence community harbor serious outstanding concerns, not only that Bergdahl may have been a deserter, but that he may have been an active collaborator with the enemy. But, you know, this is, of course, all of a sudden a, a surprise. And so Obama is going to release five top Taliban commanders in exchange for this person who has a major classified file. Now, basically, they're admitting that force could have been used to secure Bergdahl. Uh, they knew where he was, but they didn't want to risk it because he was a deserter, which is something that they also knew. So why all of a sudden did the administration opt to negotiate with terrorists? A policy that we have had for quite some time, all of a sudden now we are negotiating with terrorists. 
course, we mentioned that could it have something to do with the fact that there was a CIA agent whose cover was inadvertently blown, inadvertently blown a few weeks ago. Or, of course, did this just happen to occur conveniently to give Obama an opportunity to, you know, give the veterans a win to say, hey, guys, I'm on your side. Look, here's your soldier that you've been wanting returned. No soldier left behind. Just forget about that VA scandal, um, you know. If that is the case, because this is something that's obviously the VA scandal is something that's going to affect both sides, the left and the right. Um, if they did this for politics, that is a very dangerous and reckless decision that Obama made, not to mention that it was illegal. Uh, is there the possibility of uh, some of them trying to return to uh, activities that are detrimental to us? Absolutely. That's been true of all the prisoners that were released from Guantanamo. So Obama knows that he made a reckless decision, that there could potentially be, you know, a little bit of a terror attack fallback from this decision. Um, but he wants us to feel better knowing that they're not going to be able to move outside of the country of Qatar. You know, with this deal, the Taliban commanders, they're going to have to stay inside of Qatar for one year. Well, Qatar has now just announced that it's moved the men to a residential compound and it's going to let them move freely about the country. Uh, a golf official said that the Taliban men have been granted Qatari residency permits and they will not be treated like prisoners while in Doha and no U.S. officials will be involved in monitoring their movement while in the country. And then, of course, you know, after this, they're going to be free to go wherever they please after this year. So, what, I mean, is that supposed to make us feel safe that these guys can just move freely about and no one is actually monitoring their activities? Do they not realize that, you know, they're, they're going to have access to cell phones and computers and, you know, courier service? I mean, they're not cutting off anyone else's access to these men. They're moving about freely in the country. So, of course, this is very dangerous. And Obama knows that this is very dangerous. And it's, uh, you know, there could be future fallback from releasing these men. Now, Judge Andrew Napolitano has called for the impeachment of the president over this Taliban prisoner release, and he's stating that now the president has aided in the release of the worst terrorists in the world. I have argued that by letting these people free and their natural and probable be uh, results of them being let free is that they will rejoin these uh, this terrorist organization. The president has done what his Justice Department has prosecuted people for, successfully right. prosecuted people for, providing material assistance to a terrorist organization. Couple issues. Now, Napolitano said that this latest impeachable offense is that the president and his team violated the federal statute which makes criminal providing material assistance to a terrorist organization. This includes money, could include making maps, including professional services, and it includes releasing human assets back to a terrorist organization. So clearly an impeachable offense. Now in 2013, Jay Carney said, oh, we would not make any decisions about transfer of any Guantanamo detainees without consulting with Congress and without doing so in accordance with US law. But that was 2013, Jay Carney. Obviously that is not what happened here, but everyone wants to say that it's okay because Obama wrote himself a note. He issued a signing statement, so it's okay. Now, obviously, Obama clearly broke the law, and as I mentioned before, even Obama supporters are now turning against him. Liberal Harvard professor and CNN legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin turned on the president Monday, telling a surprised Wolf Blitzer that Obama clearly broke the law by failing to provide Congress 30 days notice before releasing five high-level Taliban prisoners. So that's, you know, in addition to this other impeachable offense. Now, he continued that the president issued a signing statement, basically echoing what Jay Carney said as well. Oh, you know, he issued himself a signing statement, but a signing statement is not the law. A signing statement is basically the president writing his opinion of what the law should be while he is breaking that law. So he's like, I'm breaking the law, but here's how you guys should interpret it. And then he thinks that he can just get away with it and no one's ever gonna hold him to task. He's negotiated with terrorists, now he's provided assets to terrorist organizations, 